Okay, I seriously am gonna spoil some absolutely awesome things in this video. So don't watch this before you watch the movie, unless you're certain you're not going to watch it. This actually has a piranha eat through a girl's face. It has a face be ripped off from the girl's hair being stuck in a rotor. It has a penis being partially eaten by piranhas. I don't have a real point here, I'm just saying it out loud. That was actually in this movie. Did anyone else get a real kick out of Richard Dreyfus essentially reprising his role from Jaws? Same brand of beer, he sings Show Me the Way to Go Home, and then they even sort of have the Jaws kind of thing with her trying to shut the beach down, but to no avail. I do think it might have helped if there had actually been a character who said, no, we're not going to shut down the beach. I mean, I'm not saying that I don't buy the prospect of a bunch of horny, party-hungry teenagers not listening to the sheriff, but I do still think that it might have added something. And of course she doesn't actually tell Jake. You know, she just says, stay away from the lake. Stay inside. Not, if you go to the water, you might be fucking eaten. I call dibs on any lost high school girls. Even though we're underwater, and that would mean they'd definitely be dead. Does this make my character a necrophiliac? Wait, are we supposed to believe that once the sheriff lady left the beach, Everything was fine at the beach. They didn't seem to worry about all the piranhas that would probably still be at the beach. And might there not be other boats out around somewhere? And then there's of course the thousands of eggs down there. These piranhas clearly don't have fully developed sexual organs. What? I'm telling you, there must be bigger ones out there. Okay dude, stop. I just had Uncle Fester tell me that all the fish I've been fighting don't have big dicks. Just let me process that, please. For being virginal and all, Kelly was sure rather easy to get into the raunchiness. And she didn't even bitch about the two naked girls. The naked underwater ballet? Man, that would be creepy and just barely allowable for a movie that was actually released in theaters and as an R, not an NC-17. Other than the way it was shot, the dissolves make it look artsy. And the fact that these two women are rather graceful and beautiful, it was pure sleighs. There's no symbolism, it doesn't impact the plot. It was purely there for young, straight males to leer at. Very sequel-baiting ending. If the next one looks to be as fun as this, I probably will watch it. They will, of course, have to find some way to supply the new giant piranhas with victims, unless they're going to be amphibians. I mean, it seemed like everybody who was at the beach died. With very few exceptions. The 3D vomit was disgusting. Die, you man-eating beasts! Oh wait, I'm not actually in the Dawn of the Dead remake anymore, am I? Why am I using a shotgun? There are thousands of these things. Oh well, I've had two scenes, five lines of dialogue. It's time to sacrifice myself in a completely meaningless gesture, with the only real result being a cool shot for the trailer. Jake, you're out on a boat on the water? That does it. I don't care that I'm the only authority figure in the vicinity who has any fucking clue what's going on here. I can't worry about all the people around here. I don't have time to orders at whoever of my subordinates survived. I think at least the one guy who may have had like one line is still around here somewhere. I have got to go save my three kids. Everyone else can wait. Oh, sure, dude who came to this town to research the water whatever the fuck, you can come with, even though there's barely room on this boat for the three people I'm going to save, and there may very well be more to save. 
Now let's go, there's no time to waste, not even on something as potentially useful as trying to figure out if anybody else in this general area is out to sea because we might be able to save more lives that way. The climax turning out to be just an explosion was kind of a letdown. It wasn't even that huge of an explosion, and yes, I get it, the water pressure. It's nice to see a movie that acknowledges water pressure. If there's an explosion in water, it is going to increase the pressure under the water. But really, that one explosion, that was supposed to take out all of them? I don't know. Maybe it would have been moving too far away from the horror aspect. But I think it might have been good if heavy weaponry, maybe at least an assault rifle, some kind of automatic weaponry, had been utilized against these creatures. It's just, we go from a ton of them committing veritable genocide at the beach, and then one explosion is supposed to take out all the remaining ones. I think it maybe set the bar too high fairly early. I mean, the moment you see the cave and realize that every single one of those things that at first you don't really know what is, is an egg with yet another prehistoric piranha in it. After that, how the hell are they going to take them all out? Maybe they were too busy setting up the sequel. I think it might have been good if there hadn't been quite as many piranhas unleashed in the first wave, and then maybe there is an explosion, perhaps a bigger one than the one we got in this movie, only it's too close to where the piranhas came from, and it made a new opening, and maybe in there were the bigger piranhas. Just a thought. I just didn't feel like it had as much impact as it should have. I mean, it was cool enough with the giant piranha jumping up and getting the researcher swimmer dude. There. Also, just a thought for the sequel, if you include as many hot chicks, can at least a few of them survive? Seriously, other than maybe unnamed extras, the only attractive woman to survive this movie is Elizabeth Shue. And she really isn't played up as really, really sexy in this film. For that, you'll have to watch Hollow Man again. Also, what a waste of Dina Meyer. I didn't even recognize her, honestly. Tiny role. The taser thing was also kind of weak. I mean, she killed, what, one piranha with it? And that was actually potentially something that could have been, like, the solution, you know, electrify the water and watch them fry. The makeshift bomb of gas and a flare was pretty cool. Not 100% sure why the walkie-talkie needed to be part of it. Maybe I missed something there. I also don't personally know if it's true, but I could imagine that it is, that some flares, at least, can remain lit underwater. Anyway, those were my thoughts on Piranha 3D in 3D. Hope you enjoyed it. I will see you next time. And then there's, of course, and then there's, of course,